What's up, everybody? Welcome to Sci-Fi Live from New York Comic Con. You guys having a good second day so far? Yeah! Yeah, we're hanging in there. I'm Andre, and we're about to talk about a little franchise known as Star Wars. Anyone heard of it? Anyone heard of Star Wars? Now, of course, you got the movies and all that stuff, but we know it's all about. It's about that merch. It's about, <laughs> it's about those toys. collector's items, those toys. And so we're going to talk to some people here from Hasbro. We got Steve Evans, the design director, and Patrick Snyder, the senior of Global Band Manager. And we're going to talk about some Hasbro Star Wars toys, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Can't Ooh, wait. Yeah. We got a... We got a lot to tell you. Yes, yeah, we, got, we got some stuff. And of course, accompanying me is a wonderful, the awesome Katie Wilson. What's Thank up, Katie? You. Thank you. I was like, oh, can I pass myself off as being a uh, toy designer? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> senior, and so we're senior toy collectors. That's what we are. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so uh, let's get right into it. So I'm sure people are interested in seeing what you brought with us today. So let's start with the, uh, the Star Wars Black Series, which is always yeah. a fun one. Absolutely. Those good collector items. So what do you have for us in that, in that realm? Absolutely. Uh, oh, those on. Great. Uh, so Star Wars Black Series uh, is our kind of premium uh, six-inch fan-focused line. Uh, it launched uh, five years ago in 2013, uh, and we've been chatting with some fans here at the con. Uh, but basically, it launched with some great, you know, recognizable Star Wars characters, Luke Skywalker, Anakin Skywalker, Boba Fett, some real uh, recognizable household names. Um, and so as we've talked with fans, you know, online, at Comic-Cons, uh, they say, you know, Black Series is fantastic. Like, you guys are putting out some great characters. Yeah, that's easy for me to say. Uh, we love well, the stuff Patrick, you're doing. Patrick, it's all you. I know, exactly. It's all, you, it's all us yeah. and the guys at home. Uh, they love the stuff, uh, but they also need that stuff that we put out five years ago when this line launched in 2013. Um, we've heard it at the cons. And so back in Rhode Island at Hasbro, we, we've talked about the best way to do that. Uh, so we discussed uh, just perhaps re-releasing some of these top figures, but we know fans who collect them in the original packaging wouldn't uh, be too happy with that. Um, and so we announced uh, at San Diego Comic-Con, that other Comic-Con, that, mm. ooh, ooh, ooh. that we were releasing a new line called the Star Wars Archive. Uh, it's a very good Star Wars-y word, uh, archive. Um, and basically, we'd be taking those top figures that are selling for large amounts on the aftermarket, uh, and bringing them to fans so they don't have to spend those crazy amounts. So uh, at San Diego Comic-Con, we announced our first wave of those archive figures, uh, which was Luke Skywalker, and then three of our classic bounty hunters from uh, Emp Empire Strikes Back, uh, Boba Fett, IG-88, and Bosk. Uh, we revealed our second wave yesterday, but one thing we haven't shown people yet, and we will be showing you now, is our products in the packaging, because uh, the packaging is very important. So we brought our three bounty hunters yep. today in their packaging. So and this here is, is the very first time that we're seeing this, right? Yeah. Very first time, products I, in I packaging. I just love that we're talking about showing these off in packaging, and we have this wonderful little brown yeah, box here. It's, it's an, an unboxing good, video. So we are here, literally making an unboxing video. So here is the new archive packaging. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Very simple. <laughs> we didn't want to upset those that had spent $200 on the original blue and black uh, you know, uh, packaging, so there you go. Um, no, I'm only joking. <laughs> it's my little box of tricks. Very yeah. authentic there. All right, so we're getting the unboxing now. going. Yeah. I feel like I should be playing some royalty-free music right now. There. <laughs> there we go. So uh, just get rid of the, the, get rid of the mop. Brush the dust off of it. All what right, do you got? Okay. Ooh. Who's at the top? Oh, it's like Christmas. <laughs> We got, we got, top. don't look, don't look, who's that? Oh, IG-88, a good you one. show that. Um, so this is, I don't know where, oh, there's the camera. Really right. This is first there time, is. you guys here, first time ever anyone seeing you lucky, IG-88 lucky archive people. in his packaging. So a lot of thought went into this packaging. Um, we, have, we have lots of meetings, our days are spent, uh, a lot of meetings, my calendar's crazy. Uh, but basically, a lot of conversations about the best way to do that. Uh, what we wanted to do is harken back to kind of the heritage of Star Wars packaging, but also the Black Series. So it's got a lot of uh, the same kind of design and aesthetic touches of our uh, Black Series design and packaging. But we also know we wanted this archive to be a timeless expression. We see this as our greatest hits or our Hall of Fame. Uh, we don't, this packaging is never going to change, so it has to stand the test of time. And in Star Wars land, there's nothing more timeless uh, than the vintage card back, the blister card that launched Star Wars toys 41 years ago. Uh, so we saw nothing better to put our archive packaging on than a classic blister card. Um, on the back here, you can see uh, we reference that. Oh, look at that. 
We referenced that original packaging that it came in uh, with some details about that. So this is our archive packaging ID, IG-88, celebrating the heritage of Star Wars. We and got here we've one. got nice. his good friend, Bosk. Very nice. Yeah. And then finally, the, uh, the bounty is. hunter everyone's heard of. Yes. Oh, Cle let's clearly someone has stolen Luke. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't got him in my box. We wanted to focus on the uh, bounty hunter. He didn't have a chromium cover, did he? Someone's nicked it. <laughs> Not yet. So those are three bounty hunters in the archive line. Um, the reason we released the three of these, if you're a Star Wars fan, and I know that if you're in this crowd, you are, um, the bounty hunters from Star Wars are, I think, probably one of the probably bounty hunters and cantina aliens are the most iconic kind of sets of characters, you right? You people obviously love a rogue, don't they? What's that? They love a rogue, exactly, these people. Exactly, the rogues. Yes. Um, so as a result, uh, the bounty hunter kind of collection within a collection for Black Series is, is important. Uh, we released uh, two of the other bounty hunters this year uh, for LOM and uh, Dengar and Zuckus as well to form all six. So we wanted to bring these three back so that collectors would be able to get them all in one shot. Cool. So that is our archive line. Very nice, very nice. I see yeah. some people already eyeballing it. I see there's already, someone has a Black Series figure right there in the front oh, row. Richard, who's that? Right Who do you got oh, there? Oh, it's Zuvio! Nice. Zuvio should definitely go in the archive series. <laughs> I would definitely buy 400,000 of Absolutely. the Zuvio ones. Yeah, yeah. And so, very would cool. you. so would you. So those are very awesome. So let's, yeah. since we're already talking archives, why don't we go now to vintage? Absolutely. We got the uh, Star Wars Vintage Collection, and I believe I see the box there, which is very beautiful. It yeah. reminds me of my childhood very much. Yeah, this is, this is our new um, Imperial Assault Tank that's just come out on the market. It's available in shops now and all good retailers, et cetera, et cetera. And we, we kind of wanted to show a little bit like how we made this, because everyone just thinks we kind of hit a button and it just gets made. That's, <laughs> I, I wish. I really wish that was, it was that easy. Um, so Sometimes we marketers think yeah, it's yeah, that yeah, easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just, just make a tank, Steve. Just make a tank. It's no problem at all. Um, so we kind of wanted to, we got some, we, we, we robbed the office of Mark Boudreau, who is, the, um, oh. who is our seasoned designer at Hasbro, who used to work at Kenner. And Mark actually worked on every single um, movie. He's probably one of the only few people in the world who's actually been directly involved in every, in every Star Wars movie, as it were, indirectly. Directly, indirectly? Yeah. And um, <laughs> so, I, so I went and robbed him. I basically stole all his kind of um, stuff that he, he used to, to make this. And I just kind of wanted to show, share it with everybody. All right. So first of all, what Mark does, because he doesn't have much time on his hands. Yeah, thanks, sir. Is, um, so just after we saw Rogue One, and everyone else watched it, we loved it, um, we said, oh, that, that tank is awesome. We could make one of those for Vintage Collection, which we, we knew we were going to announce as coming back. So Mark goes away, and he he, he uses foam core and cardboard and makes a model that he thinks is in the right proportions and, you know, it starts off like that. And this is his actual one. So this is a couple of years old. Wow. And he will build that and he will show us and we will say, oh, that's cool. Yeah. What? All right. Let, let's, let's do this. How much? What are we going to do? Let's, let's do it. So the, he, the next stage of after the foam core model is that we then... Um, and I was actually remembering we made this. Uh, we wanted a model. We had kind of internal meetings to get uh, the company <laughs> sold on this. Uh, we had like two weeks. And again, yeah. being the marketers, we were like, we can have some sort of plastic model, right? And Mark uh, is like, no, well, I can get you the foam yeah. core. So this, we produced this, that. This is a story of my life. Uh, <laughs> Marketing going, can you just, uh, we need that. And I'm like, you can have a cardboard one. <laughs> and it worked, obviously. Yeah. It turned out great. So next stage after that is that we get into sculpting. So we're using uh, digital sculpting. And Mark and the team are starting to kind of pull it all together and starting to work out the geometry and the diameters and the wall thickness. And then we do what's called a check model. So they take those 3D parts and they print them out through th on 3D printers All and right. we get something like this. Yeah. So you can start to see it's starting to look a little bit, I've got to kind of watch here, looking a little bit more like, like the thing and... Here, let me... Whoa. <laughs> wow. And then there's a ton of pieces as well. <laughs> Just dump so, them on out. And so, the rest you know, of our time, you need to like put this 50, all together. It's like <laughs> 50 or 60 pieces. And I just want to highlight how much detail goes into our vintage, um, vintage line. You know, those of you who have got this are looking at it beautifully, but you haven't torn it apart, I hope, unless you buy two, in which case, good on you. Um, you know, the amount of detail and the, oh, I've got to work like opposite. The amount of detail that goes into here is incredible. Um, you know, layers and layers of piping and tubing. And, and Mark is 
is an expert at adding imperial um, filigree, filigree flourish, flourishes, that's the word I he uses, do, flourishes yeah. on these things. So if there's like a bit that's a bit plain in the actual prop, he'll add, add, add imperial kind of lines and stuff. And who knew that there are particular imperial square panels that you know, have a very certain proportion. I actually did not know no, that until it, this moment. It's so insane. I'm learning along with everyone else. And, and this is probably my favorite part of the, um, of the tank which Patrick will get for me, um, eventually, <laughs> is there's actually a little coffee cup inside this tank. So even Imperial drivers and commanders need their Dunkin' Donuts. I'll stay awake. Oh, are we allowed to advertise? Sorry. <laughs> the Imperial runs on Dunkin'. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and so there we have it. We have all this kind of stuff. It's amazing. So we, we, we check model that, and then we move to tooling, and that's when we actually get to the um, get to the proper stuff, the thing that you're going to get. Some space. Absolutely. Oh, it even moves. You can get that. Look, it, we, even, we even, the actual tanks move, the track, the treads move. Really cool. Wow. And then we finally get to the finished piece, he says one-handed. Patrick, could you get over that box for me, please? Thank you. Yes, we are taking it out of the box. Everyone holds oh, your breath. Oh, yeah, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. I, well, well, there's a few of, people that faint it right it's now. It's kind of cool now, all this rough <laughs> unboxing, isn't it? So, and then we have the final one there. I, it's, it's absolutely beautiful. We kind of, he says. No, it's, I got it, I got it. So we got all the little, um, the little kyber crystal containers. We've even made it here where they actually have the kyber crystal containers oh, wow. inside. And if I pick the right one, oh, look at that. I did pick the right one. <laughs> There's one actually got kyber crystals inside. Oh, wow. So um, highly, highly detailed, incredibly looking. And that is basically how we go from a cardboard cutout that someone's done really quickly because marketing wants it to the <laughs> finished product that hopefully you guys will want, and girls, of course. Well, it's really cool to see the comparison side by side, yeah. the piece the over there. After. It's actually. That's a good I've never, yeah. I've never, I've yeah. never actually. Yeah. Look at that, it's spot on. That's perfect. Spot on. There you go. We should just sell that. And it's there great. You, you mentioned kind of the detail here. Uh, it's a conversation we have a lot with the vintage collection because uh, like the Black Series, it is our fan-focused line. And so, you know, Mark and Steve will talk about kind of all of the details in here. And obviously, there's a cost for all of those, but we know that our vintage fans, they, they want that level of realism and detail and movie accuracy. So that's something we place a priority on for the vintage collection. But uh, like all good collectors, I've got to keep it in the box. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I would like to talk a little bit about where your love of Star Wars first came from. Were you always Absolutely. collecting Star Wars toys as a kid? Does it show? I mean, <laughs> we like I think a little so. bit. <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I was a big Star Wars kid. I mean, I think back in those days, there wasn't so many brands that you could kind of get involved in. You were like Transformers, Star Wars, or Joe, or, or Action Man back in England. I was always a Star Wars kid from the age of about five up until about, embarrassingly, about sort of 13. <laughs> then I kind of like discovered teenage years. I kind of did that, and then I came back in when I was about 16, 17, and kind of re-bought it all again, like I'm sure a lot of you did as well. So, wow. I love it. Uh, yeah. I love it. <laughs> Uh, I love it as well. Uh, so for me, I think the Star Wars movies, maybe other people had this experience, but they were some of the main or only movies like on reruns just all over again on some of those cable channels, TBS, TNT, whatnot. And so just watch them over and over again. I remember for whatever reason, episode four wasn't on for a few years, and so I saw it for the first time after having seen Empire and Jedi, which was probably not the best way to watch them, but it was still fantastic. And, you were, you were lucky. Like in England, we had three channels. Three <laughs> channels. True. I had we're to have a pirated copy. Should embarrass me to please. And just uh, watched it over and over yeah. and over and over again. And I love the toys as well, but I really got into the books uh, in the 90s. The Heir to the Empire series, uh, the Truce Bakura, all of those. And so I think my favorite product that we've done is the Grand Admiral Thrawn uh, Black Series figure. Uh, we actually, when I interviewed at Hasbro, I kind of casually dropped Grand Admiral Thrawn, and that's when the designers Ooh. were like, okay, okay, he, he, he's one of us. He knows one exactly. thing. Exactly, so I always say my life will be complete, you know, on the Star Wars brand when we finally do, and there are no plans for this, a Joris Chabot, oh, uh, Air of the Empire, you and your Black Series figure. That would yeah. be amazing. You so and your how, how do you turn such a passion and love for something into a career? 
That's so cool. I, I have no idea. Yeah. I have no idea. I, I joined Hasbro as 20 years next year. I joined when um, the prequels were being were launched. And I, there was a job came up in Hasbro London, and I was just like, it wasn't Star Wars. It was nothing to do with Star Wars. I was just like, oh, if I can get in, I can get free figures. <laughs> And I didn't get free figures. I, had to st I got a bit of a staff discount, but I there were so many of them. I still spent a lot of money. But yeah, it's just, just getting in, just getting in and perseverance. Do they give you free figures now at least? Uh, yeah, I just don't tell them. I just keep them. <laughs> or that, he steals that, that, it that like he stole these things. He just steals them. <laughs> the yak face, the barge yak face is coming home with me for certain, even though I've, ordered, I've already ordered my barges, so. I know for me, I was uh, interviewing uh, with some different companies a few years ago, and so I looked at Hasbro, and they had an opening for, a, I think, a preschool gaming job. And I was like, you know, I want to be on the East Coast. You know, Hasbro's fantastic, so absolutely. And then that job got filled, and they were like, well, it was actually filled by the guy who works on Star Wars, so now that position is open. Is there any chance you'd be interested in that? Uh, and after about, you know, oh, 10 man. seconds of mumbling, I was like, absolutely. Wow. So, yeah, lucky That's turn incredible. of events. That's, That's incredible. great. So you guys had some uh, some recent reveals uh, yourselves. Would you like to share those in case anyone missed them? Yeah, you want to? Yeah. So I want to get rid of this though. I don't want to take yeah. this back. Uh, that's a lady over there who's holding a who's holding a phone up to me. There she was we go. begging I think for she toys. She raised her hand earlier. So, oh, are we giving away? Oh, wow. that's so nice. You're First welcome. giveaway welcome. of the day. I heard. We gave oh, away. There we go. That fox a cameraman did it. Is yours. Absolutely. That is yours. Congratulations. That's for me to carry. Don't worry. You are doing me a favor. <laughs> that's it. So, yeah, so we've got some new reveals that I want to take time for, but I think we have Ooh. we have a little time to talk about maybe General Grievous yesterday. Oh, uh, Grievous. Yeah. I, I'm sorry it took so long. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm really sorry. Yeah. But uh, we're there. We're there with Grievous. He's amazing. Um, I know the photographs are going um, out on Instagram at the moment. Many of you may have noticed that we actually set up the model wrong at our desk side. Did you know that? We had the cape, all, we had the cape all wrong. We missed the collar. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, oh, but yeah, Star Wars Grievous, fans won't notice that. Yeah, they will. <laughs> oh, they will. I've already, I've already been told many I times. Have. But um, yeah, Grievous is fantastic. It's, uh, it's literally the number one uh, figure that we've that people have been asking for for many, many years. It is the one I get pinned up against walls and said, where, Evans, where is General Grievous? And uh, he was just too big to produce. So now we got him in our new, uh, our new 2999 line and uh, he, he is coming along swimmingly. And just for our fans out there to kind of tie the past to the present, uh, we actually did a survey uh, online two years ago um, and he was in there, and based on the results of that survey, that's what Steve's talking about, that he was the number one requested uh, figure. So, so if you remember taking that survey two years ago, uh, you contributed to General Grievous. We eventually get around to it. Yeah, exactly, uh, making it into the line today. So. Well, I think that's awesome that you take this opportunity to talk to fans and see what their requests are, and then that turns into actual products. I think, yeah. It's absolutely vital. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, Star Wars fans are probably the most passionate fans in the world, and they have, oh, they have opinions. They have real opinions, and they love Great. certain characters. So, and I love certain characters, and I'm in a I'm in a privileged position where I can kind of exact my preferences. But I shouldn't be doing that. I should be talking to uh, the fans here and uh, online. I kind of listen to what they say, and you know, I I, I don't want to cloud my judgment just because of what I want. But it is it boils down to that singular thing where a fan loves Star Wars for a specific reason. So it's like, how do we ensure that all those millions of fans get exactly what they want? Which is impossible, but I, think, uh, I, I don't mind having a crack at it. Yeah, I think we see it as like a responsibility and obligation. It's almost like a, a trust. Like we have an obligation to give fans the product that that they want. Like Steve said, it's not about us; it's about them. So you know, at conventions, uh, at events, like we, I, I love talking with them and just seeing their passion and excitement and hearing what they want and then bringing it into the line. But I will never be able to give you everything you want, though. It's just impossible. <laughs> but that's, uh, that's a good problem to have. I'll take right. it. I'll take Absolutely. it. That's good to hear, because Hasbro picked up another franchise as a favorite of mine pretty recently. So I'm hoping to get some... Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> so I'm hoping to get some, some similar love and treatment. But what else do you yeah. have to show us? What other uh, who wants to see some new product never seen before? Yes. yes. Yeah. Me. There we go. Exclusive. I want to see new product. I do too, yeah. What's in there? Um, so our first one that we're revealing, so these are both in the vintage collection. So two new figures that we're showing uh, that we're going to show today. And then we're revealing more stuff at our panel oh, on yes. Sunday. Oh, yeah. Just a pre-warning. When I came in here, the security guard took this yeah. and went, what's in here then? <laughs> and literally shook the buzz. <laughs> and we said, well, now broken toys. Yeah. So, so that's I'm, great. I'm, I'm, uh, fingers crossed. 
So our first one, uh, feel free to step in at any time, but basically the great thing about the vintage collection, bringing that back, is that it's given us the opportunity to kind of do some tweaks and write things that were, were once wrong, if that makes sense. Oh, nice. Um, little Quantum Leap reference there. Um, so this guy right here, 40 for, oh, oh, other one, okay. You want to do that one first? Uh, yeah, nice. That's all right, we'll roll with it. So this one right here, Han Solo in his trooper disguise for vintage collection. Ooh, Whoa, right now, baby. The first time. Yeah, oh, Mr. that is there you go. lovely. So this wow. is one. Yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah. You can like clap. It's OK. There you can go. clap. Yes. Follow this man's. There we go. Great guy. Uh, so we've done Han Solo in his trooper disguise in the past, but there were there were some things wrong with it, yeah, right? Yeah. So um, I believe Han came out in his Stormtrooper disguise for Legacy Collection 2009. Yep. I want to say. Sounds so um, we're bringing him back into the vintage and putting, you know, there was never a Han Solo on vintage card. Like back in my day, no, it's it was, crazy. It's like I want. Where's my Han? I had to wait till like 95 or 97 when we had the mail away for the Power of the Force. Um, so he's coming back to his uh, his. His, uh, his roots where yeah, he should exactly. be. So we've got a new face sculpt. It'll, it'll also include our photo reel technology, so we'll get a good Harrison Ford likeness. It comes with a, a, a remodeled upper torso and a new helmet as well, new, new, uh, new tooled helmet. So Absolutely. he is almost brand spanking new. Absolutely, so great addition to our vintage line. Uh, we're really excited for him. Um, and our next one that we're showing is another one that has had kind of a fun history that I learned more about uh, a little <laughs> bit ago. Um, so this is our 41st Elite Clone Trooper. Oh, there we go. Oh. Look at him there. He's yeah. yeah, give it off. There we go, yeah. Yes. Lead it off. I should have given that guy the tank. Not her. <laughs> Lady, you got to give that tank back. That. There we go. They could share it. Uh, shared custody. So you want to tell us the story oh, this history one. here? I, and now, in, in England, we say third time lucky. In here, you say third time's a charm. Third time's a charm. Yeah, That's the right it. way. So, yeah. Yeah, the right way, yeah. We said it first, I'm sure we did. Um, so the 41st Elite, Elite Corps Trooper, um, it originally came out in uh, the Black Series three and three quarter inch figures, I believe, and uh, we did it completely wrong. We like missed off the deck on his legs and on the thighs. It was, it was, it was bad, <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> and then we re-released it um, with updated deck on the, on the legs, um, but unfortunately it was, only, it was only mostly available in international markets and it wasn't available in the US, so we did that wrong too. And so we thought, well, with all the prequel love that's going on at the moment, we thought, well, let's bring it back to, um, into, uh, um, what's it called? A vintage, vintage collection, vintage thank collection. you. The vintage collection. But this time we've got it right. We've even got the gray, uh, little details like this make a lot of difference. That's we've even got the gray on the gloves and the gray belt. So finally, third time lucky, and is the charm, we've got this little beggar right. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. No, so these are two reveals that we have today. Again, if you're uh, around for our panel, 115, we'll be doing more reveals. And then Steve mentioned the prequel love, um, which which I love. I, I enjoyed the prequels. I was kind of of that age. I'm loving the rehabilitation. You're not that young. I know, I'm aging myself down. No. I'm like, what, 25? I don't know. Uh, so I, but I think it's great to see them coming back. Uh, and we do have, that's kind of what led to General Grievous. And we do have more prequel reveals coming later in the year. Um, so we're, and that's all we're going to say about that. But we're excited about that. <laughs> one of them is, oh my goodness, one of them is We've just gone back and forth the, about where to reveal them. <laughs> the oh, best, yes. Come on, the a little best bit. photo reel. That's, I know, that's all we could say. <laughs> all right, I tried, So guys, it's, I a, tried. it's a prequel, that's, that's, all we, that's all you're giving us? <laughs> Items from the prequels. This year will not end without us revealing more toys from the prequels. All right. Wow. I promise. Does anyone have a guess? We aren't going to say anything. <laughs> Kitster. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to come and smack you on. <laughs> we, we will remain expressionless. It's a Star Wars.com Star Wars plant. I know he is. Oh, man. We have perfected our poker faces. Yeah. <laughs> very good, oh, very oh, good. Oh, oh, we're meant to be doing poker faces. We have oh, to. <laughs> that is why I'm not very good at cards. Yeah. Is there any character or item, anything from Star Wars that you've always wanted to make that ha that you haven't yet? Joris Shabbat. <laughs> 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 Who, does anyone I, in the crowd know who Joris Shabbat is? Okay. Yeah, I didn't get any reaction, so. He does, that there guy over there. Those are the two, are, we're the three people that would buy that item, basically. I, 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 already, I already got mine. I wanted my yak face. I wanted yak face. So with the barge that's coming out, thank you. If you back the barge, hands up. If you back the barge. Backers, I haven't got one to give away, I'm sorry. Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, thank you. But yeah, yak face was a big one for me. Yeah, yeah I think that, yeah, George Shabbat. <laughs> I'll make you a George Shabbat. <laughs> there we go. A custom George Shabbat. That'd be great. Yeah, when you leave. I'll never <laughs> leave. leave. Why would team. I leave? <laughs> when you leave the team, that's the only way you're going to get it. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> so obviously there's Star Wars fans of all different ages, all different types, but what do you think is it about the Star Wars 
fan that's a collector. Why do you think that that's such a big thing that's been carrying over since Star Wars began all the way to the present day? I think it's the, you said what carries on the fandom over the years. I mean, I think it's the, the entertainment. Like the Star Wars trilogy, it's just, and the sequel trilogy and prequel trilogy, all the entertainment, it's just timeless and it kind of speaks of these, you know, universal truths and it's just so cool. Like George Lucas, obviously a genius coming up with this 42 years ago. So I think it tapped into that kind of heartstring and has continued to pull I, at I, it. I, I, think it's, I think it's basically, yeah, it's the hero's journey. And then that, that is the story. It's like super cliche in terms of like ha what the story is. But the, you know, the farm boy to, to master is wonderful. And then I think I really, I really believe that it's about the design. I think it's the aesthetic of Star Wars. The, the, and the um, marketing. And the and marketing. The, it's nothing to do with the marketing. <laughs> no, it's all, it's all to do about the way it's designed. <laughs> like, oh, it's just, it's, the Macquarie designs are just sublime. Just like, it's an X. It's an <laughs> X-Wing. You know, a hamburger. That's the Millennium Falcon. It's just pure geometry. And I think that just, this speaks to us. Come on, I'm getting very designery. I'm a designer, everybody. <laughs> no, you but you're right, it is. Yeah. It's absolutely uh, true. Macquarie's awesome. Well, let's get all those products side by side there so we can just give them one more look there. So thank you all for being a part of this. Really appreciate you guys. You are welcome. Thank you Thanks, welcome. everybody. Yes. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Patrick. So check thank that you. out. And you said you guys have a panel on Sunday. So yeah, yeah, so check out their panel. There's going to probably be some more reveals there and see what else is coming up for Hasbro in the Star Wars line. And coming up next, we have the cast of Lore is going to come up on stage here. If you want to keep talking to us online, you can tweet us at sci-fi, hashtag NYCC, and hashtag it's a fan thing. Thank you all. Thank and you. We're going to go on the next one. Thank, Thank you so much. I got to tidy up now. Hi, I'm Jackie Jennings with Sci Fi Wire. If you can't get enough of New York Comic Con, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel for news, interviews, cosplay, and so much more. What are you waiting for?